project archive uh, of what I call my director's cut of all the top secret witnesses because most people don't realize that the only thing that's been available to the public has been either a two-hour or four-hour um, video that was done as an amateur video, frankly, um, in the aftermath of the National Press Club event over a decade ago. But I have 110 hours on, on videotape already, and I've cut that into a 35-hour prime director's cut. But we haven't ever been able to get it out, so we're going to start releasing more and more of that. We started last year, and then we started working on this film, and you know, without any, with everyone being a volunteer, it kind of fell aside. But that's what we want to. We're going to engage someone full time to just do nothing, but bring out all this amazing information. Most people have never seen. Um, well, there's only a hand people, handful of people who've seen the, the, the briefing that I put together for President Obama. Um, which was, you know, carried to him by a close associate and, and a supporter of what we're doing, but who who is very close to the president. Um, and but that needs to be seen by the whole world, you know. So, um, but where, you know? So that there's so much material like that that it's an embarrassment of riches. We have the world's largest collection of bona fide amazing stuff, and. Uh, and yet our our frustration has been how do you get it out there because you have to have people who know how to do it and and can produce it and and get it out but now with uh you know YouTube and all the other channels um and sites that are out there um if we had someone who was doing nothing but that full time it, it would be just this amazing amount of information and that's what we also want to start doing um after the film comes out this spring yeah, well, I think when the film does come out, um, you, you know, the phone is definitely going to ring for people looking for what's next from Dr. Greer and the team, and I'm sure that there will be additional follow-up documentaries that will come from the subject matter, and there is a lot of information. I mean, the, the, the film, the way I see it right now, basically catches people up, um, and when I look at it from my own perspective, my six-year journey boiled down into two years. Everything I've seen or learned or came to understand that took me a lot of hours of research and talking with folks and going out on CE5 missions and things, you know, people are going to get caught up really quickly. Um, once they digest that core information, um, they'll be primed and ready for all of the other things that you have in your library. So I think we're very excited to see all of that. I, working closely with you, have not even seen all of it myself. So. Um, well, no, you've only seen 1%. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah, excited yeah. To, uh, to see what else is in there. Yeah. And, you know, we have the other thing we're getting ready to do is that, you know, we have these four books that are out, but they're all in, in paper. And we're getting ready to convert all those to e-books so that people can get those just like they can get the training information in an app. So this is all work that we're trying to do. Um, you know, of course, I mean, you know, my wife and I and a couple of people working on it are a bit overwhelmed. But... But uh, the thing that people can do is is to help us by networking this to the to all their friends and family, and also starting their own contact group in their area, and learning how to do this because it creates this shift in consciousness and, and the morphogenic field effect. It's like the hundredth monkey effect. It really has been measured scientifically that when more people start doing something, it opens the doors and paves the way. But I think the same is true for disclosure. It's the same is true for the technologies. It's all about a shift in mass consciousness that builds a new civilization, uh, sort of in that, that moves beyond you know, trying to deal. And a lot of people want to get caught up in conspiracy theories and railing against this cabal of misanthropic uh, psychopaths who've run the planet into the ground. Well, my view of it is that you have to be aware of those characters because you know I get a death threat every week. But the reality is, uh, you you don't focus on that. You focus on the creation of an entirely new civilization based on a new consciousness. And as Albert Einstein said, no problems ever been solved from the level of consciousness that created it. So we have to create a new level of consciousness and understanding, and and then go from there with all these tools and information and technologies. Yeah, our thoughts so powerful energy, literally in every. In every thought, and um, by projecting that light forward, I think we all together can create that that awareness and that reality. Um, much like uh, the way that the wicked witch melted away, and her minions suddenly became like, oh, thank God, you got rid of the witch. You know, I think <laughs> project that light, and uh, even the military and others will eventually, um, you know, the good will overpower the bad, and uh, it's happening in so many other parts of our world. 
in civil rights movements and other places where the tide has just turned so much. And I think um, it's such a great time to be here on Earth and be a part of all this exciting movement and change. Oh, yeah, it is, definitely. And uh, and and we're also at a point where, um, you know, having been doing this for a couple of decades, I've seen the shift where at one point there wasn't a time where – there was a time where there was no such thing as crowdfunding, no such thing as Facebook, no no such thing as Twitter or video on demand or 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 or. And so, you know, when we, you know, I look look back even ten or twelve years, it was very hard moving this message out. Now, everyone knows about it. I mean, you know, if I, it, I the last time uh, we were in uh, Barcelona this uh, fall. And I, you know, I couldn't go to a restaurant. People, everyone there knew what the disclosure project was and knew what we were doing. And so, what I found is that even though the mainstream media may blacklist this and the New York Times won't cover it, it doesn't matter because no one, you know, that's they, there's not the monopolistic control of information and the media that existed a decade ago. That has changed. This whole thing of the new media is a real phenomenon. And that's what's so exciting about doing this documentary as a crowdfunded event, uh, one of the largest, if not the largest, crowdfunded documentary in history, but then being able to move forward with with more and more information in the same uh, paradigm, but also doing the, the technology effort in the same paradigm. Most people who tried to do this these sort of secret technologies have made the huge mistake of doing it secretively. And I know I had people who, who told me, oh, don't do anything with this little ET specimen, this six-inch creature that may be an ET that we're doing the genetic work on. And, and we've already had um, you know some of the top scientists in the world look at who have said, look, this is nothing that we've ever seen. And uh, it's several years old. It is not a, a fetus that was miscarried or something. Um, we already have that information in. I mean, this is going to be explosive for the world. But people are saying, don't talk about it. It's too dangerous. I said, no, 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 no. If I do something like this secretively, I'm a dead man. But if I have thousands or millions of people who know about it, that's our protection. Same thing with this technology effort. Everyone thinks they're going to to be clever and be secretive. And I tell people, look, go to the National Reconnaissance Office headquarters. They're the guys. NRO runs all the super secret satellites. Over their door, it says, we own the night. So those dudes own the darkness of secrecy. We own disclosure and doing things and bringing things out. So you play to your strength, not your weakness. We're never going to outfox the CIA and the NRO on this stuff. But if we put it out into the public and then we say, hey, now come and try to suppress us as we bring this out, when you've got millions of eyeballs watching, they're going to go, ugh. And actually, this is what I planned to do in the 90s. And by the 2000s, when we did the disclosure project, everyone said, oh, my God, how can you do this? I said, look. We're going to do it. The first hour of the National Press Club event was electronically jammed. The people at the National Press Club in Washington never seen anything like it. I said, yes, I told you this was going to happen. But it was just an hour delay. It finally got out to the world. It ended up being like 800 million people around the world either heard it on radio or saw it. And eventually, you know, it got out. And, you know, not a single one of these military guys who were standing up there saying, I will testify under oath before Congress about what I saw and did. None of them even got a phone call threatening them. Why? Because millions of people saw this. These, You know, these people aren't stupid. They're not going to step into a billion-watt spotlight. Well, we have to do that with these technologies also. It can't be Silicon Valley where everyone's running around with the next version of the iPhone 5, you know, thinking they're, you know, going to keep it secret. It has to be done so the whole world knows. And so at my view of this, this energy research effort is that we stand it up, and if necessary, we have parts of it being streamed live on the Internet. So anyone who wants to come in and harass us, boom, you're on candid camera. Right. Okay. No, I'm sorry. You know, and I and people, I've I've spoken to some people in the intelligence com- community, and they say, "Oh my God, that's a great idea," because that's what they don't want to do. They don't. These are like vampires that only come out at night, or cockroaches that when you cut on the lights, they scurry into the dark corners. So you know, this is why the the the, the strategy. It's so simple, but it's it's so effective, and that's what we've been doing for 15 years with disclosure, and now we're going to do it with this film and with 
the energy effort, and that's the only strategy that will work because, you know, Dr. Bearden and people like that have sat, and we've looked at what's happened over the last 100 years of how all this knowledge has gotten suppressed. And there's a certain half a dozen to a dozen prime mistakes that people have made, and we've said, okay, we have to learn from history so we don't repeat it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess the Energy Lab sounds a bit like a safe haven for uh, pioneering energy developers and also people who might have access to um, information. Um, so I, I believe that's also what the work you've been doing with the Disclosure Project, uh, giving people a place to um, air that information in a safe way um, without fear of harm. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think that's that's how you create uh, – you do it in, in a unified way with large numbers of people, and then it becomes – something that these folks don't quite know how to handle. The most they can do is just bring out all kinds of false information, disinformation, make up lies about you. I remember being at at, at, uh, at Purdue University at the Aerospace Engineering uh, Department, and there was a well-known debunker that was debating me there. And privately, he pulled me aside, and he says, oh, you know, you're really on to something. Keep up the good work. He got up on stage, called me a liar, called Gordon <laughs> Cooper a liar, said that I was some sort of, you know, whatever, uh, Rasputin that was putting everyone under a spell, and they had false memory syndrome. And it went on and on and on. And this was in front of, like, a whole auditorium full of, of aerospace engineer PhDs and, and master degree people at a major university, the same university that Neil, Neil Armstrong uh, came out of. And yet at the end of the day, I just stuck with the facts and let him call me every invective and every horrible name. And I didn't even address those issues. I just stuck to the facts and the truth. And as Patrick Daniel Moynihan said, everyone's entitled to their opinion. They're not entitled to their own facts. The facts are the facts. So that's what we just say on that message. And at the end, there was this huge you know, applause, and there was like 300 people standing around trying to get information from me, and there were like three people around this debunker who works for NASA and the intelligence community talking to him because it was obvious that the guy was just – but. So people say, don't you get kind of over it with that? I said, yeah, sometimes. But basically what you have to understand is that that's their stock and trade of the intelligence community. About all they have to fall back on is lies and defamation, invective, and name-calling. And when you cut through it all, the facts are there for anyone to see once you put it out there. And, um, you know, it's not just a smoking gun. We have the dispositive proof now. So that's, sure what, are. that's what's exciting. Great. Well, um, Dr. Greer, I think for the listeners, maybe it'd be a good idea just to mention the new website again um, uh, so they can stay tuned to all the latest developments uh, for the film. And that website is SeriousDisclosure.com? Yes, S-I-R-I-U-S Disclosure.com, SeriousDisclosure, all one word, dot com. And that's where there will be links to the film. And actually, that's where to stay tuned. Also, you can sign up there if you want to know about the premiere in Los Angeles and be invited to that or if you want to help uh, with other uh, premieres in your own city, uh, send us a note, um, and uh, we'll uh, keep those in a file so when we're ready for that. And uh, you can still donate to the film there as well if you'd like. And uh, we hope to nail down a date for this premiere in the next uh, couple of weeks, and uh, we'll notify everyone. It's going to be a very exciting event uh, in Los Angeles uh, this spring. So stay tuned for that. And also, if you'd like to join us in uh, the high desert of Colorado and the Rockies in, in June, we'll be there on an expedition under the stars to make contact. And that's going to be uh, the uh, week of the 2nd of June until the 8th of, 9th of June uh, of this year. And also, if you want to join me in England in July, we're going to be going there on the 27th of July for a week and we're in, until the, the uh, 3rd of, of August. And we're going to be in the crop circles and also at this really special place doing our contact protocols there in uh, England. So if you want to join us, all the information for these events also is at SeriousDisclosure.com. So, again, well, thank you, Chris, for, for joining us and informing people of your journey, but also of, of kind of what your perspective is on grassroots bringing out of the film. Yeah, thanks for having me. I look forward to the next few months and bringing the film uh, out for the, all of the audiences to see. 
All right. And thanks again also to the World Puja Network for hosting us every couple of weeks. And to all of you who have supported the project, thank you so much for your kind support and generosity. And until next time, keep looking up. God bless. Take care. Bye-bye.